Live from San Diego, California, it's theCUBE. Covering KubeCon and CloudNativeCon. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back, this is theCUBE's fourth year at KubeCon, CloudNativeCon 2019 here in San Diego. I'm Stu Miniman, my co-host is John Troyer, and welcome to the program, John Coyle, who's the Vice President of Business and Corporate Development at Sumo Logic. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. All right, so John, we had theCUBE at Sumo Logic Illuminate, uh, where you had a relevant announcement. I've heard you've had some great momentum of that, so why don't you bring us up to speed, kind of you know, the, the Kubernetes sure. related activities. Happy to, yeah, this is an exciting KubeCon for us this year. Two months ago at our user conference, we announced our, our Kubernetes solution. Um, we believe it's the, 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 uh, the first true DevSecOps solution for Kubernetes. That is one platform to, to provide monitoring, troubleshooting, and security uh, across a, a Kubernetes environment. And uh, so far, it's, it's been an incredibly successful launch. Um, it seems to have hit a, a real, real sweet spot with, uh, with customers that are uh, increasing their, their adoption of Kubernetes and, uh, and, and growing, uh, you know, growing quite rapidly. And, and figuring out how to monitor and troubleshoot and secure that at scale yeah. is a huge challenge. Well, yeah, so look, you brought up DevSecOps and, and mm -hmm. you know, that's scaling. The surface area is, is ever increasing. We're yep. talking a lot about edge at this conference uh, too, so that, that surface area is getting order of magnitude bigger. Yep. The amount of change going through there. So, you know, how do you help those teams? You know, it can't just be people. There's got to be, there's yep. got to be automation, there's got to be platforms that just enable me. Yeah, great, to, to great question. What, what do we really mean by yeah. DevSecOps yeah. instead of just throwing it around? Really, the way we break it down, uh, the, broke the solution down, is the three core components. The ability to, uh, to, to, to do discoverability, observability, and security. So when we say discoverability, creating an intuitive interface by which uh, everyone from an SRE to a SOC analyst can easily uh, uh, identify um, issues and, and uh, the context of the application that's running on Kubernetes. The next piece is then observability, being able to um, get all of the relevant data, the logs, the metrics, the events that you care about to, to determine whether you have an issue or not. And then doing that all in the context of not a traditional infrastructure view, but really in a service level view, which our practitioners and our customers really care about. They think about their, their microservices based apps in terms of the app itself and the, all the different microservices it uses, not on the underlying infrastructure that's there. And uh, although that may sound subtle difference between monitoring and providing visibility from an infrastructure perspective, it actually makes all the difference in terms of being able to effectively and quickly identify an issue and then remediate it. Um, these environments are getting way, way too complex, especially in, on top of Kubernetes as you look at the ad serverless, the ephemeral nature of these environments it's, 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 it's a huge trend. All right, so just, I, I hear you throw out a lot of things, and there's a word I didn't hear that I've been hearing a lot this year, especially when you talk about, uh, you know, in the container world and even serverless, it's observability. Yep. Uh, because, you know, the, the traditional looking at logs, monitoring environments, I need a systems view, I need to be able to deal with all of the real-time changes, so uh, what, what's Sumo's take on uh, kind of this observability trend that we've heard a lot of companies talking about? Yeah, yeah, that's where we've invested uh, the vast majority of the, 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 the development in this solution is around observability. And again, it starts with being able to ingest all the logs, metrics, and events. Um, and in that, in, in, in that way, we've, we've embraced the open source community and you're using things like FluentBit, FluentD, Prometheus. So lever leveraging the tools that are already out there, getting that data into the platform, and then being able to allow you know, different users, the, uh, a hierarchical approach to navigate through the data and the content that they care about. And basically apply the mental model they have for their microservices or Kubernetes infrastructure to, to the actual tool they're using. So we've brought out a, a new Explorer UI, which allows, as I mentioned, from an SRE to a SOC analyst to go get the view they care about that's relevant to the security problem they're trying to solve, or, or you know, a reliability issue they're seeing with one of their, one of their core applications. So John, I want to stick with, with Kubernetes itself for, for yeah. a minute here, and 
you, some of the words that have already been, you've already, we've already said here are things like microservices, yep. and also scalability and complexity. You, you, so what is Kubernetes and, and apps that are built on Kubernetes bringing uh, to the data center or the, or the public cloud that uh, are, what are the problems they're bringing with them that, that you all are helping solve? Oh yeah, that's a great question. Um, um, I, I think some of the more you know, complexity in microservices, yeah, I'm sure there's yeah, more. And, and let me ask you for, answer first in the context of what we see uh, at our larger customers that are more traditional, that have legacy systems. Generally what's happening is their, their most important applications, the customer facing, the revenue generating applications, whether it's an insurance company or a bank, those applications are getting modernized first and they're moving to containers, microservices, Kubernetes. Um, and as those teams go ahead and develop and build, um, the, uh, the IT and the security systems designed for legacy apps can't really support them. So first and foremost, those teams are struggling with visibility to, to what actually is happening and, and you know, the traditional monitoring and troubleshooting, but really doing it from a service-focused perspective as opposed to just an infrastructure. You know, whether something's up or down or, 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 or slow or fast. And, and that is one of the, the, the biggest challenges they have. And providing that, that discoverability coupled with that observability is key. For our more mid-market type customers that were born in the cloud or cloud native, they get this right away and have really been solving this problem by a, a hodgepodge of different solutions and really having a, a swivel chair type management where they move from one pane of glass to another and they kind of connect the dots. And again, this comes back to, they already have a mental model of the way their infrastructure and their applications work, so they're able to piece that together. Um, but I think that, that, that those days of, of, of relying on that are, 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 are fewer and fewer because this, the applications and the, and the systems are becoming more and more distributed, more and more complex. And especially then as you add security into the mix, which I think a lot of customers are waking up, this is great, we're not really securing this as effectively as, as, as we should be. Uh, how do you bring that into the mix also? Yeah, so John, I'm wondering if you could bring us into the organizational dynamics of what's happening here. You, you talk about scale, yeah. uh, every customer we uh, talk to here is they're spanning between their traditional environments, and then they're modernizing things. They yep. build some new, some things get ported over, but you know, I don't want to use the word bimodal, but they, they need to, pull things along, and security needs to live in all of these worlds. Uh, exactly. So, so what, what, what kind of impact is that having on the organization? And the oh, we think, and it's, we think it's dramatic, and that's why I, I started out the conversation by we really believe we have a dev sec op solution, it's just not marketing speak, where um, if you look at the announcement we made at Illuminate, um, we, we highlighted how we, we've also embraced Falco, the, the security open source capability, but also announced integrations with the leading container and Kubernetes solutions in the market, Aqua, Twistlock, uh, StackRox, where um, dev, ops, and security are, are really all coming together, where that, again, back to the, the analogy I made before, the platform needs to be able to serve both the SRE for a traditional you know, reliability issue, all the way up to a SOC analyst who's trying to troubleshoot and identify whether there's a real threat with a particular application uh, vulnerability, and it all needs to be in the context of, of, of one platform. You can't have two different systems going forward. Hmm. The, uh, with the, um, I've lost my question here. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you, partnership announcement yep. uh, announced this week. We were talking about some of the partners you work with. Give us a broader view as to you know, what, the, what, what the news is this yeah, week. Yeah, we're, we're excited. So the, the, we, uh, on Monday we announced the, the Sumo Logic App Intelligence Partner Program, um, and Really, this, the, the first iteration of this was, this, it was announced at Illuminate with, uh, with the, the partners I mentioned, uh, Aqua, StackRox, Twistlock, um, Armory, um, CircleCI, uh, CodeFresh, who all built apps integrated into our Kubernetes solution that provides customers with, uh, with uh, deep insight into monitoring, troubleshooting, and securing those different tools. Um, and this partner program extends that where we're now making it uh, much more open and easier for any, any, any vendor here today to join the program, build uh, an integration directly to the Sumo Logic platform and, and, and provide rich, rich content. We've been building an awful lot of these apps ourselves over the years, 
um, but we're working to, looking to work with partners more closely as they know their, their apps, their use cases, their content much better than we will. And kind of forging that, 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 that partnership to, to bring that you know, combined added value to customers. And this is something that our customers continually ask us for. I've got this new tool, I want to get that information into Sumo um, and be able to, 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 to get value like I am with all the other solutions I have in Sumo. I, I do want to follow up now, okay. which, which is that you do have a great customer base, right? Yep. And so you have a great visibility into the market. Yeah. One of the buzzwords that flies around the industry is multi-cloud. Yes. Right? And so I'm very curious on how you and your customers are seeing the, the progression in the marketplace, their landscape, multi-cloud, because yeah. you know, there are people out, out there who are very, very far ahead of everybody else who are kind of, sometimes the word multi-cloud gets made fun of, yeah. but I, I think it's actually real life. So can you talk to us a little bit about your customers? Yes, yeah, we've, we, see that, uh, we see that front and center, and, and Kubernetes is one of the big drivers to it, right? It's, it's, uh, it, it's made these different clouds uh, very equal. For whether I, I, I run a, a, a Kubernetes environment on-premise, or move in AWS, I could easily move into GCP or Azure. And uh, at our user conference two months ago, we, we brought out a, a, a continuous intelligence report that we bring out annually. And there's some interesting statistics in that where we see the more the growth in uh, uh, customers that are multi-cloud, it's all being driven by their adoption of Kubernetes. And it, it, it basically uh, uh, abstracts out the, the underlying, the underlying uh, uh, infrastructure mm -hmm and now allows them to, to move across that, and, and uh, we yeah. see that as a, a huge demand. I, yeah, I actually have some of the, the stats here, yeah. that's, that's, which reminded me of my question, which yeah. is you know, enterprise adoption of multi-cloud in your survey, 50% growth year over year, yep. you know, 80% of customers, if you look at all the clouds, are, are using some sort of Kubernetes, so I mean, that's, that, those are real uh, startling numbers, actually. Yeah, yeah, just about every major company we, we speak to has some initiative to, to get to multi-cloud, timing, question of how large and when they're going to actually do all that, but it's on everyone's roadmap for sure. All right, well, John, I'm glad. We've solved all the security issues <laughs> in multi-cloud today. Um, <laughs> for, for those people that might have a little bit more to fix, you know, look, give us a little bit of a look forward as to what more, uh, you know, where we're going, uh, both for Sumo and for everybody in the DevSecOps space, um, that, that kind of the, 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 the growing uh, maturity there. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Two areas uh, we're, we're excited about is um, being able to, you know, in many respects, I, I look at our business, uh, we're very, very similar to a bank. People in, in invest or we ingest their data into the bank of Sumo uh, with the promise of returning it back to them with some interest or some, some, some return on it. And um, there's no shortage of data coming to us. So being able to allow customers to do and use that data in more granular uh, and, and bifurcate that data. All data is not you know, uh, uh, created equal, but allow them uh, economically to get more value out of that data. You're going to see a lot of uh, you know, what we call economic disruption coming from us in the next, uh, next few weeks, next, uh, next year, in some of the things we're, we're, we're talking about. Um, and then also um, taking a, a powerful platform like Sumo's continuous intelligence platform and really helping customers map it more directly to specific use cases. Uh, we have, a, we have a, a, a graphic on the, on the new website announcing the App Intelligence Partner Program that basically shows here's just about any customer's uh, 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 development pipeline, whether it's a bank or a hot startup, going from an idea all the way to production. Um, they need visibility and security across all of that, 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 that uh, that infrastructure and those applications. And we can provide that. What we need to do a better job is helping customers understand how they can apply the power of what we have to these specific use cases all along that pipeline. Um, and you know, as I'm sure you can attest from other conversations, there, there, there's, there's a lack of, of uh, uh, there's a labor shortage of knowledge of how you take all these new technologies and really apply them uh, very effectively at scale um, and that's, that's an area we're going to be investing in, in heavily to, to help customers do that. All right, perfect yeah. way to end. Thank yeah. you, John, uh, for, for giving much. us the update. Appreciate and the time. Uh, congratulations on the progress yeah. uh, since, since Illuminate. For John Troyer, I'm Stu Miniman. Stay with us for more wall-to-wall -wall coverage here from KubeCon, CloudNativeCon 2019. Stay classy, San Diego, and thank you for watching theCUBE. <laughs>